we're hearing from conservative commentator Tommy Lahren, the first time on television since she was pulled from her popular online talk show. The host rose to notoriety with her inflammatory, no holds barred straight talk, but now she says that same opinionated assertiveness has turned her employer against her. It's my job, this is my life. Without that, I feel lost. Emotional and introspective. This is a version of Tommy Larry, rarely seen. When your outlet is taken away from you and you don't understand why and you're so disappointed and you're so blindsided by it, it hurts. A far cry from the brash confidence that made her a star. I'm getting pretty sick and tired of the failing mainstream media. Your husband was a drug dealer. It protects your right to be a whiny, indulgent, attention-seeking crybaby. A right-wing firebrand on Glenn Beck's The Blaze, Laren attracted millions online with her controversial and unapologetic critiques. Just take a moment to remember who President Obama chose in 2008. But what difference does it make, right? Please welcome Tommy Laren. But all that unraveled after these comments on ABC's The View last month. Well, I can't sit here and be a hypocrite and say I'm for limited government, but I think that the government should decide what women do with their bodies. So stay out of my, my guns, and you can stay out of my body as well. The fallout was swift and biting. A social media firestorm for the social media darling. But it's when she got back home to Dallas, she says, that the other shoe dropped. I was getting ready to go in and do my show, and I got a phone call saying that show was not on. They've been suspended for a week, perhaps longer. I was flabbergasted. Laren says the Blaze suspended her and terminated her show because of her pro-choice statements, a claim the Blaze denies. Laren is now suing for wrongful termination. This is not about politics. This is about someone who had an opposing viewpoint that has been silenced and sidelined and thrown away. <laughs> the 24-year-old inviting us into her home for her first televised appearance since appearing on The View. Clear things up. Were you fired? Suspended? Uh, I get up in the morning. I don't have a job to go to. I don't sit down in my chair and deliver my final thoughts. Uh, I don't have a dressing room. So I'm terminated. I'm fired. Are they still paying you? Yeah, they're still paying me. In my neighborhood, when you're fired, that means they stop paying you. The way I look at things. I'm not doing what I was contracted to do, which is produce a television show, a political talk show. I no longer get to do that. Although she's being paid through September when her contract is up, she wants out, saying in her suit, expressing her First Amendment rights and her personal opinions about a woman's right to choose is not grounds for termination and that Beck and others embarked on a public smear campaign against Laren in a clear attempt to embarrass, humiliate, and undermine her. You accuse not just the Blaze, but Glenn Beck specifically of a public smear campaign. Explain. After my appearance on The View, I saw a lot of commentary on Twitter and other platforms, but I wasn't allowed to respond to those. I was silenced. You know, I have no problem with free speech, but free speech and then silencing your opposition, boy, I have a problem with that. The lawsuit also alleges that the Blaze Incorporated stretched yellow caution tape spelling an X on Plankton's office dressing room door. I'm someone with a thick skin, and I can stand up to about anybody. But when someone does that, that's really hard for me to take in. You seem moved by that. I, I, I am. See, I see a crack in yeah. what is otherwise a very serious <laughs> Yeah. Tough demeanor. Loyalty is everything to me, and you can disagree with me. But to go out and try to humiliate me? Very, very disappointed. Perhaps worse for a media personality with more than 4.2 million Facebook followers, Laren also claims that The Blaze retains control of her page. You don't control your own Facebook page? Not anymore. I control my Facebook page. Why don't you control your own Facebook page? It's a good question. That's what I want. And that's my name, that's my picture. She's suing for the immediate return and complete access to her Facebook and other social media accounts. The fundamental question is going to be, is this her personal Facebook page, in which case they have no right to control it, make it go dark, change it, or is this a Facebook page that is associated with The Blaze? Uh, that's effectively owned and run by The Blaze. On his channel, Glenn Beck insists that Laren's stance on abortion had nothing to do with her current status at The Blaze. If you're pro-choice, you can have a job at The Blaze. I don't want straw men. I want people to make a real argument on the other side. But takes issue with the justification for her beliefs. I would disagree that you're a hypocrite if you want limited government, and yet you want the government to protect life of the unborn. 
In a statement, The Blaze saying, it's puzzling that an employee who remains under contract and is still being paid has sued us for being fired, especially when we continue to comply fully with the terms of our agreement with her. That's my Trump purse, too. Ivanka sent me that. Nightline visited Laren in Dallas last December. She was heading off for work at The Blaze. I got a Cadillac because I'm American like that. I've had a lot of great opportunities that I have seized, but don't for one second think that I didn't work my butt off to get where I am. At the time, she seemed to be queen of the castle. Yeah. When full control of her voice and her vision. Three, two. Before you get your panties in a wad over Trump. It had been a splashy year of polarizing standoffs for Laren. Colin Kaepernick. It's this country, the country that you have so much disdain for that allows you the right to speak your mind. Just might be a Blackfield Gates in the making. Beyonce after a Super Bowl performance, a seeming tribute to the Black Panthers. Guess what, Beyonce? White people like your music, too. White people buy your songs on iTunes, memorize your lyrics, and admire your talent and beauty. That she made personal by going after the singer's husband. Your husband was a drug dealer. For 14 years, he sold crack cocaine. Much of what you say, I think, could be described as provocative. Do you mean it all? mean at all. It's important to start a conversation. And sometimes you need a little kick in the pants to start that conversation. And I'm happy to be that kick in the pants. You tweeted about Black Lives Matter, meet the new KKK, which you later deleted. Do you regret writing that? I deleted it. Listen, I know there's people that are going to disagree with some of the things that I say, and that's okay. I'm not here to please everyone. But do you regret it? Deleting it doesn't necessarily mean that you regretted it. I think that sometimes you need a little bit more explanation than the characters that you're allowed on Twitter. So when I feel like something goes out there and it's more inflammatory than I anticipated it to be or than I expected it to be, then I said, you know what, hey, I stand by my thought process behind it and I'd like to explain it further. Please. But I deleted the tweet. What's the thought process behind it? Because for many people, there's a long road to drive between Black Lives Matter and the Ku Klux Klan. You know, Byron, I'd love to have a show that I can discuss all these things with you, but I'm not going to get into those ones right now. With no show, without full control of her social media presence, Laren has been pushed to the sidelines, for the moment at least. Sounds like you've shed a tear or two over this. Don't tell anyone. I'm supposed to be tough. I'm a human being at the end of the day, and something has been stripped from me, and that's my ability to work. That's my ability to have a voice, and that's been taken from me, wrongfully. So I'm upset by it, and I'm hurt by it, and I feel betrayed by it. But don't count her out for long. I'm not the kind of girl that sits in the corner and cries about things. I don't consider myself a feminist, but boy, I will not lay down and play dead, ever. It's worth noting her lawyer sat in for that entire interview.